Let's go into the machine setup and threading so you know exactly how to wind a bobbin, thread the machine, and where the extra cords go. So if you haven't figured it out, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through. Underneath the power um, of the, the foot control, there is a little place to plug this in. Once you plug it in, I, use, I do not take it out unless you absolutely have to, but it will plug in and stay nice and secure. With this little opening crevice, you can wrap your power cord up and kind of store it for when you transport it to class or wherever you're gonna sew. And then the other end is gonna just plug in over here on the side. And I've already turned the machine on and plugged it in. It is a wise idea to go ahead and plug the machine in to a surge protector. I've got a few less um, extra things here to um, peel off so my top can come off. Why a surge protector? You do have a computer here, and during the summer months, and especially in some hotter areas of the country, we pull a lot of power away from our machine, and sometimes it'll do funny things, but if you can have that on a surge protector, or better yet, a battery backup, things will stay happier with your machine. It just helps eliminate issues that you might actually run into. Save you the headaches of having something go out and then need replacing. All right, so when you it comes to you, you have a bobbin and some thread on the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just cut the thread up here on the little spindle that once I wind a bobbin, I can cut the thread on and then pull it out the bottom part here. This way the thread continues to always pass through the machine, not go back up. And that's helpful when you really get into threads that are linty, fabrics that are linty, you're not dragging extra thread back up. And since you have a little cutter, you can just pull your spool off, cut it, and away you go. So we'll take our bobbin out and let's go ahead and start with a fresh bobbin. Now there's two ways to actually wind a bobbin. I'm putting my spool on. So if you have a crosswound spool, th threads that look like they're little X's, it's best that it actually lays down and spins off here. Threads like your dual duties that are stack threads, you'll want to stand that up and you can also stand that up on this other vertical spool and you can go here. You can also put one of those little felt pads underneath so you don't hear that extra uh, noise when you're sewing. But let's go ahead and do so. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do a bobbin. You are gonna come up and over the silver bar and then click it underneath this little button. It needs to click in. That's a pretensioner for winding our bobbin. And then you can take your thread from the inside to out and in the hole. Look for the hole that's on the side with the H. When you have a bobbin, a Husqvarna Viking bobbin, the H is always up when we set it up here to wind the bobbin and also when we drop it down into the bobbin case. Slide the bobbin to the side and notice it says bobbin winding on. So all I need to do is step on my foot control. Oh, make sure this little guy stays in that little groove there and it'll continue to wind. What I wanna show you is a different way of winding a bobbin is actually you can wind the bobbin once the machine is threaded, you can wind it from the needle right up to here. So either one works, but boy, when you're sewing and you need to wind a bobbin, why unthread your machine? So for threading our machine, what we're gonna do is take our hands, we're taking my left hand over the silver bar, come underneath the white here, and watch, I'm holding on to this thread with my right hand. That's so I can make sure that as I lower this thread down into right here, that's the tension area, I make sure that the thread really gets seated well as I go straight down. There are arrows here pointing down, then there's arrows pointing back up. And if it helps hold onto this thread a little bit more, you're gonna come over and all the way to the top, all the way to the back, and then down on the left side. So we went in on the right, down on the left, and then keep pulling all the way down. Also, my presser foot is up. There's one more guide at the top of the needle. You can go ahead and do that. We will do a, a video close up on the needle threader. I'm gonna just go ahead and use it right now so I don't have to poke it through. Make sure the presser foot is up when you do this sequence of winding a bobbin through your needle. I can't stress that enough. If this foot is down, the tensions are tight and this is gonna pull way too tight and it's gonna cause issues with your machine and the bobbin. So make sure that foot is up all the way, and then we can go ahead and put our thread back through that little hole on the top side. We're finding the H, there it is, and threading it through. Putting the bobbin onto the bobbin winder, pushing it to the right, and if I just wrap my thread around the 
the wrap my hands around the thread about three inches up and then step on the foot control that will start to spin and eventually it'll break off depending on how strong your thread is if you have a little tail which i do i'm going to go in right now and clip that off make sure you don't have any tail coming back up out of that and this will just wind notice that this is why these two little pieces of metal are right here so if you are winding through the machine you are pro um, protected that front part of our our the area there it is always good to wind a full bobbin this machine does have a bobbin sensor so once part of it is used up then it will go ahead and indicate you're out of bobbin it will stop spinning when the bobbin is full you can slide that back lift up and then use that little cutter i showed you to cut the thread since the h is up when you wound the bobbin just take the bobbin straight down and drop it into the bobbin case we will do a close-up of what i'm doing there's a little groove down here we're catching it in and then we come up and over the edge and there's a little cutter right here watch what i'm going to do i'm going to put this little um, door over the top then cut my thread and I don't have to bring that thread up when I start to sew let's see how we did let's go ahead and step on the foot control and go ahead and sew if this machine sounds good you did it correctly you can use the little scissors it'll lock my stitches and cut my thread all at once at the end of the fabric so that is how easy it is to thread up a machine and now we're going to go ahead and get into all the specifics closer up detail of how the bobbin goes in and how the needle threader works